You can make an argument that 1985 Topps baseball cards are the perfect physical representations of the hobby boom. I mean, here you have a set that is a typical 1980s Topps with all its mushy brown cardboard stock and thick white borders and subsets and so-so card design. But that's also loaded with rookie cards that still make your mouth water if you've lived through their glory years. Of course, like most sets from that era, much of the promise of the 85s have gone by the wayside. That doesn't mean that they're just fodder for the common bins, however. In fact, several still hold a decent bit of value, especially in graded form. Here then are the most valuable 1985 top baseball cards, as ranked by PSA 9 values from the Sports Market Report price guide. Say what you will about Big Mac and his bulging biceps, and whatever he took to make them bulge so, but I bet that once upon a time you thought he was amazing. Like in 1987 when he set the rookie home run record with 49. Or in 1989 when he hit 70 bombs to outpace Sammy Sosa as they both passed Roger Maris for the single season mark and set up Barry Bonds run a few seasons later. Or when you walked onto a card show floor in the late 1980s or the 1990s and saw that McGuire's 1985 Topps rookie card, the one showing him as a member of Team USA Olympic squad, was climbing in price again. How high could it go? 50? 100? 200? Yes, 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 and more! Until the cardboard bust and the PED taint and our collective gasp of cybermetrics, which of course softened McGuire's overall impact. Then things sort of got ugly. Still, this is the seminal card and the evolution of the hobby, and the allure of big boppers never really goes away. Today, the Big Mac rookie fetches about $50 in PSA 9, and several times that in 10 form. All the stuff I said about Mark McGuire, yeah, a lot of it applies to Roger Clemens too, except you know Rocket was actually a much better player than Big Mac, like an all-time great, like a top five starting pitcher great, right? I know, PEDs, I get it. But from a baseball card perspective, Clemens was the second pitcher to really capture the hobby's imagination in the 1980s, right after Dwight Gooden. When Clemens broke out in 1986 with a 20 strikeout game en route to the American League MVP and Cy Young Awards, he sent us clamoring to pull his rookies from our maybe someday bins into our Road to Hall of Fame showcases. This cart ebbed and flowed along with Clemens' performances into the early 1990s before rocketing through the steroids decade right along with him. Today, even with the backlash against the muscly guys from those years, the Clemens Rookie is a $30 item in PSA 9. Like Clemens and McGuire, Kirby Puckett was something of a dark horse among the 1985 Topps Rookies, and just one of dozens of youngsters who might someday be the next somebody. So we set him aside and waited. Until 1986, when Puckett smacked 31 home runs and hit 328, and especially in 1986, when his Minnesota Twins shocked the world with an amazing run to the World Series title. Thanks to various ailments, Kirby only lasted 12 years in the majors, but that was long enough to make him a legend and secure his place in the Hall of Fame. It was also enough to keep his rookie card in good stead among the decade after his untimely death. Today, expect a PSA 9 Puckett rookie card to pull $25 or so. Who was the hottest rookie card and probably the hottest player heading into 1985? You could make a strong argument it was Yankees first baseman Don Mattingly, but Donnie Baseball had to share the spotlight with crosstown youngsters Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden of the Mets. And while Strawberry drove the hobby frenzy with his Rookie of the Year campaign in 1983, Gooden became an almost mythical figure in 1984. Part of it was that he was just a teenager, and part of it was that he was simply dominating batters, based on statistics we saw in our Sunday newspapers. But a lot of us struggled to even get a glimpse of the young man, and that only added to his mystique. By the time Gooden appeared in the 1984 Topps Traded and Fleer Update sets, collectors were fairly frothing to get a hunk of his cardboard. And that fever only heightened over the winter and into the spring when we finally got a look at his first widely distributed baseball cards. 
The 1985 Topps Gooden card became an immediate smash and climbed to 3, 5, and beyond as Dr. K mowed down hitters at even a more astonishing rate that summer. This record breaker rode the rookie card's coattails to some extent, and the two were roughly equal in value these days. Because while Gooden sort of flamed out in the 1990s, he still fashioned a career that was better than some Hall of Famers. And his cards still thrill your belly if you were able to experience the Gooden phenomena in the moment. This RB is about $15 item in PSA 9. If you're wondering how the card of a guy who fell off the Hall of Fame ballot after one try in 2006 can make a list like this, remember our discussion about Gooden's record breaker card. I'll just add here that if you can gaze upon this hobby icon with its ambiguous blue sky background, is it sunny, is it stormy, and the serious young man who could have been king in the foreground without experiencing a hitch of excitement in your chest, well then, you'll truly never understand what the hobby was like during the boom years of the 1980s. Today's cards owe a lot to forgotten treasures like this good and rookie card, and plenty of collectors still remember. That's why even today, after all those years and all those stumbles, the 85 Gooden is still a $15 to $20 card and PSA 9. The summer of 1985 was a magical time in the hobby and the game, especially if you liked breakout pitchers. There was Gooden, of course, who we already knew about from his 1984 Rookie of the Year performance, but who had broke out even more in 1985. And then there was Brett Saberhagen, who looked like your friendly neighborhood farm boy and who seemed determined to win every game he pitched for the Kansas City Royals. And then you had Oral Hershiser, who was supposedly almost 27, but who you knew was either a choir boy, a bat boy, or some Doogie Howser brainiac prodigy. All Hershiser managed to do was go 19-3 and with a 2.03 ERA as his Los Angeles Dodgers took the division flag in the old National League West. That was good enough to net Bulldog a third place finish for the Cy Young boat and a Topps rookie card that quickly climbed to the $3 range. Today it can touch $10 or more in graded mint condition. Yes, Pete Rose is a pariah. Yes, he bet on baseball. No, it doesn't look like he's going to get into the Hall of Fame anytime soon. But the fact remains that Charlie Hustle was one of the most iconic and best players in the game from his debut in 1963 right up until the bitter end. And in 1985, he broke Ty Cobb's career base hit record. Rose has a few cards in the 1985 top set, but this manager issue tends to bring in a bit more than the others in graded condition. In PSA 9, it's about $10 a pop. What can you say about Nolan Ryan that hasn't been said a million times, including hundreds right here? The man is a legend, and he has been for decades. You can bet, too, that Ryan cards will be at the top of the value chain in whatever set they appear in. This 1985 Topps issue, showing the Ryan Express with the Houston Astros, is no exception. Expect to pay about $10 in PSA 9. Eric Davis was one of those guys who didn't look like he could do all the things he could do on the baseball diamond. Built like a fawn, Davis could run, field, and hit for power like few in the game. But like Buddy Daryl Strawberry, Davis fell short of the lofty expectations that a 1986 breakout set up for him. This rookie card doesn't have the swagger it once did, but it's still a thrill to stumble on one in a box or at a show. Today, you can find Eric Davis for less than $10 even in PSA 9. Like our video? Then like our video and subscribe to our channel, WaxPackGods.com.